thank you very much for the kind introduction uh, and to the organizers for inviting me um, to speak about my project today, which really involves understanding how stem cells divide and differentiate with a particular focus on um, CPH, which is a, which is a poorly described um, transcription factor. So the intestine is important for a number of essential processes that maintain homeostasis. Um, these include absorption of nutrients, providing a barrier function against harmful pathogens, as well as immune regulation. And we know that the intestinal stem cells are important for a lot of these processes due to their ability to divide and replenish the epithelial cells um, that make up the gut, which carry out these functions. However, defects to, the, to these processes often leads to a number of gastrointestinal diseases, um, which currently affects approximately 40% of the world's population. So understanding the mechanisms of how homeostatic imbalance arise and their implication for physiology is an important factor for furthering human health. Um, so to investigate this question, I use the fruit fly as my model organism, and like the mammalian system, they also have a they also have intestinal stem cells that are able to divide and self renew, and to also give rise to differentiated cell types such as the enterocytes, um, which are shown here, and they're historically known to carry out the uh, absorption of nutrients, or they can also differentiate into the enteroendocrine cells, which are um, uh, shown here, and they are packed full of uh, neuropeptides that can be to signal systemically and control various physiological processes. So therefore, the decision that stem cells have to make um, to whether to, to divide either into enteroendocrine cells or enterocytes is an important one for maintaining homeostasis. So work from a number of groups has shown that the notch pathway is important uh, for the differentiation of intestinal stem cells. So just to give a brief background um, to the notch pathway in flies, upon the delta ligand binding to the notch receptor, a proteolytic event takes place, uh, which results in the notch intracellular domain translocating to the nucleus to then interact with various transcription factors and um, regulate target gene expression. <clears throat> we also know uh, from a number of groups um, that high delta in stem cells results in the differentiation um, of them towards enterocytes, and that the transcription factor clumphus um, is important for this process. However, the differentiation program of the enteroendocrine cells are not very well understood. So I wanted to understand this better and um, discover what kind of mechanisms govern the ISC to EE differentiation. So um, to do this, I combined CRISPR mutagenesis of the notch receptor with single cell RNA sequencing to understand how the intestine is changed when notch, when notch signaling is perturbed. So we used um, we targeted the notch um, receptor with two guide RNA, specifically in the stem cell population, using an inducible system shown here. We then um, dissected the intestine and dissociated them into single cell suspension and performed single cell RNA sequencing using the 10x uh, genomic platform and proceeded to analyze the data set. And I just want to highlight that a master's student who worked with me was mainly responsible for analyzing this data set. So um, here I'm showing, um, we did these experiments in duplicates and here I'm showing uh, a summary of the uh, cell numbers we recovered. Um, th so this is after QC and it currently comprises the most comprehensive um, uh, single cell data set for the fly intestine at the moment. So when we place these cells on a UMAP plot, we can see that we recover all of the cell populations in the intestine. And we can also see that in the notch perturbed condition, there's a massive expansion of the stem cell population and also a massive expansion of the enteroendocrine cell population, which is shown here in uh, red and orange. We can also see this in the tissue when we look in the intestine. So perturbing notch um, results in a high stem cell uh, proliferation, which are shown by these green cells here, and also an increase in the enteroendocrine cells, which are shown in, in magenta. When we look at um, all major cell types, we can see that indeed, while the intestinal stem cell and the enteroendocrine cells increase in number, the enteroblasts, which are subsequent, which subsequently uh, differentiate into enterocytes, are significantly depleted, and there's also a trend towards a decrease in the enterocyte population. So this suggests that there is a, a shift in the differentiation program of intestinal stem cells towards enteroendocrine cells when notch is perturbed. 
We can visualize the shift uh, in differentiation using trajectory profile. Here, for example, I'm showing a 3D trajectory profile of the notch perturbed condition, showing that the intestinal stem cells are, are differentiating towards these enteroendocrine cells. And to understand the mechanism of how this shift is happening, we looked at differentially expressed genes along this trajectory. And one gene that caught our attention was um, called chronophage or CPH, because under homeostasis, it was specifically expressed in uh, the progenitor stem cell population. And when notch was uh, lost, it, ex it increased expression in the enteroendocrine progenitor population. Indeed, using a, a CPH uh, endogenicity tagline, we verified that CPH was expressed in the stem cells, which are shown here in uh, magenta. And we concluded that notch signaling negatively regulates the expression of CPH along the ISC to EE uh, lineage. So what exactly is CPH? Um, well, CPH belongs to the family of zinc finger transcription factors, and it's orthologous to the human BCL11 A and B genes, um, which are associated with autism, sickle cell anemia, and also schizophrenia. And it's a poorly characterized transcription factor that was uh, only very recently named chronophage um, due to its role in temporally patterning neuronal subtypes uh, in flies. So what roles does CPH have in the ISCTEE differentiation? To investigate this question, we studied a genetic interaction between notch and CPH. So as expected, when we knocked on notch with RNAi, we saw a massive expansion of uh, the stem cell population, which are in green here, but also an expansion of the enteroendocrine cells, which were positive for the neuropeptide um, allostatin C, which are labeled here. When we simultaneously knocked down notch and CPH, we can completely uh, rescue this phenotype and revert it back to a wild type scenario, suggesting that CPH is required for enteroendocrine cells and stem cell proliferation during no low notch signaling. So therefore we conclude that CPH is required to generate allostatin C positive enteroendocrine cells and also um, for stem cell pro proliferation during low notch signaling. So we next wanted to understand what the physiological significance of this genetic interaction is. And to investigate this, we performed lifespan assays and saw that while loss of notch signaling reduces the lifespan of flies quite significantly, if we knock down CPH with two independent RNAIs, we can completely rescue this phenotype, suggesting that CPH is also important for, for the physiology of uh, flies during the low notch signaling. So I've shown these genetic interactions with CPH and notch, but we wanted to also understand what the role of CPH is during homeostasis. So to investigate this question, we used the lineage tracing system, which initially marks stem cells in both GFP and RFP. Um, and so, sorry, it marks uh, stem cells and their progenitor cells in GFP and RFP. And as these differentiate, um, RFP is retained and GFP is lost. And when we knocked down CPH by itself using the system, we saw that the stem cell population decreased, but there was an increase in the number of um, differentiated cells uh, that had large nuclei, which are these enterocytes um, that I'm showing here. So our working model at the moment is that notch pathway is normally suppressing the expression of CPH and that CPH is involved in regulating the balance between enteroendocrine cells um, and enterocytes. And this ultimately impacts um, on the lifespan of flies. So how does CPH do this and what, it's, it's, what, what are the targets of CPH? Um, so, to investigate this, so to investigate this, we predicted the CPH targets using the scenic method to identify stable cellular states by evaluating the activity of gene regulatory networks in each cells through co-expression modules. This allowed us to identify a network of target proteins, some of which were actually part of the notch, WINT, and EGFR pathway, which are highlighted here in different colors. So to um, functionally validate these targets, we again performed genetic experiments um, with NOTCH. And we saw that if we knock down, um, uh, for example, these three targets in the NOTCH RNA background, we can completely rescue the NOTCH hyperproliferation phenotype that we see here. And we also counted mitotically active cells. And um, we also saw that this was uh, significantly reduced compared to NOTCH by itself. 
What was interesting was that some of these targets, for example, NSIB and NERF in one, were actually negative regulators of notch signaling. So suggesting that um, suggesting that CPH is uh, tuning notch signaling by controlling uh, negative regulators. So we're now um, validating these um, uh, target genes using Nanodam ID, and um, we will shortly release uh, our whole data set in a shiny app. So in conclusion, um, we've generated a, a comprehensive single cell map of the intestine and identified CPH to be a novel, novel regulator of stem cell proliferation and enteroendocrine cell differentiation. Um, we've shown that CPH is important for regulating the lifespan flies, that the lifespan of flies, and identified some putative targets that we're validating uh, with Nanodam ID. So with that, I'd like to thank my um, postdoctoral advisor, Michael Boutros, for, for his support and guidance, and also Nick, um, who performed the computational analysis uh, shown here. I'd like to also thank Shiv and Tianyu for their contribution towards some of the experiments, and the rest of the Boutros lab um, for their support, including Svenja, who prepared um, the uh, Telex libraries for us. I would also like to thank our collaborators, um, Wolfgang Huber and Oliver Stiegel, who, st who um, helped with the computational work um, that was involved in analyzing this data, and also to the fly community, including Andrea Brand's lab, Norbert Perrimon, and Bruce Edgar for sharing various fly um, reagents with us, and to also the audience um, for uh, listening. And I'd like to take any questions. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, for a very interesting seminar. Um, I will start with one. Um, there's been other labs that have recently shown that interendocrine cells can de differentiate or the, the numbers can change in response to diet. So, do you think chronophage might be a potential target of, of this kind of um, dietary or environmental regulators of interendocrine cell fate? It, it may be. Um, so what we think at the moment is that chronophage is um, the most upstream factor that's regulating the enteroendocrine cell uh, fate. So there was a there was a quite a few um, uh, data I haven't shown uh, due to time constraint, but we think that chronophage is regulating the expression of Prospero and SCUT, and this is how it um, directs uh, stem cells to become enteroendocrine cells. So it may well be that these uh, de-differentiation processes are also going through chronophage as well. Thank you.